And we know somebody that's been involved in embankments better than anybody. I mean, we're talking about the Christopher Columbus of embankments. And, uh, and that's our man, Billy Conforto, RIP. And right now we got a special moment. Actually, I'm going to call his brother, Chucky, and get him on the line right here. And this is uh, Chucky. Hello. What up, Chuck? What's up, Theo? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay, man. I was just over in Biloxi at the casino over there doing um, a show this past weekend. So, You know, I, I, had, I was at my brother's house uh, Saturday. We had a live uh, fantasy football draft. And one of the guys there was like, yeah, we just went to on a Saturday or Sunday. One of the days, I think it was yesterday, actually. He come back and he was like, man... I want to check out this dude, Theo. Y'all know him? I was like, yeah, I know Theo. So I've been talking to him. Oh, that's hilarious. I didn't catch his show. I didn't know anything about it. Well, next time when I come over to the uh, to Louisiana, I'll, I'll get you over to one. Yeah, I'd like to come check it out. Yeah, it'd be great, man. Sure. Uh, dude, there's so many fans that are um, that are fans of Billy, bro. Yeah. Yeah, so many people awesome. love him, man. Um, you know, and I just wanted to know like a little bit more about him because you know I I met him. We used to we was bus boys together, and uh, and he was probably the wildest dude I ever met in my life, man. You know, I was uh, I was talking to my brother, my youngest brother. You know, my mom she had seven kids in eight years, which you know a lot of people have a lot of kids. Jesus, that's like a- Drew Brees type numbers, bro. When you, <laughs> she's uh, she put it up there. Nobody gonna be able to catch it. Right? Know, dog, yeah, damn have, boy! Right when you have an eight year old and you're in the hospital having your seventh kid, that's a lot of kids. Wow! They're all from the same mom and dad. Yeah, same mom and dad. So it wasn't like you know she had a bunch. We have a bunch of baby daddies or whatever. How they say it these days? But yeah. I was telling you know so I was at my youngest brother's house. Uh, when I was texting you, I think yesterday, mm-hmm. man, my days is kind of confused. We was like up till like three o'clock in the morning as I was playing cornhole and my days are a little mixed up here. But anyway, we was talking, he was like, he just was like, man, Billy, he goes, man, mom, remember, you know, mom always sending us to the store and running back and forth. And Billy came over one day. He's like, man, I got your bike. <laughs> and he was like, man, he goes, mom, make me go to the store time and run errands. I got your bike. And he's like, how did you buy me a bike? He goes, I didn't buy it, but I got you one. That was Billy. You know what I'm saying? That was Billy. He was wild, man. Yeah, he was one of a kind, dude. He, I mean, I don't even, yeah, he and I were bus, but well, I guess he was a waiter at this restaurant. And then next thing I know, dude, he was always, he had us always on like all kind of weed adventures. He was doing, he was running weed. He was always getting his car fixed. Um, he 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 would well, give we you. We was all on that a little bit together with you know with the with the weed and stuff. Actually, I'm a fan because of that. Oh, it, it, I, got it, Chuck. I got it explained. I mean, I got a, I actually got a pardon from the governor, which worked out great for me. But dude, I remember we was working at the restaurants, and then yeah, dude, I remember I used to drive him across the lake to get weed, and we would come back with so much weed, bro. Well. The person he was coming to see you talking to. <laughs> oh, there we go, man. Well, look, nice to <laughs> nice to talk to you again, man. <laughs> Dude, and y'all had the craziest fucking family. People was boxing. People was uh, I mean, at, people was they at, at, people were on pills. Everything was going on. Yeah, drugs did run. Uh, they tore our family apart. You know, it was Billy uh, and then our three cousins, Ronnie, Chuck, and Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a few of them boys could box i mean they were good they were going somewhere but that monkey got on them. they couldn't get it off it was tough i'm you know man i'm it's what do you do you know they don't want to be that way i just talk to billy about it all the time like billy would get in these uh he would get in these moods where you know he you wouldn't see him for a while and you, we all knew what he was doing but then he would show up and it would be billy again he'd be like come on we're gonna work out and he billy was always the same way so he'd have to get the camera out he always had this polaroid camera so he'd get the polaroid out and he would take a picture, and he was like, "I'm holding on to the picture, and we're gonna tell, you know." And so we're gonna oh, check yeah. them in, yeah. So then set we goals. take the pictures, right? So then we would go work out hard, and boy, he wouldn't let you. Uh, you couldn't skip, you couldn't cut a, a rep short. He was on you. That's how Billy was. And even like I heard one of your cast about the steroids, and you said that I had a flashback. I forgot Billy used to be like that. I remember, like he was he was doing I think like Winstraw or something crazy, and he yeah. was like. And I kind of was like, man, I kind of want to do that too. I'm playing football, and I'm like, you know, I'm like, man, I want to try that too. So, 
He's like, all right, this is going to be the routine. This is how we're going to eat. He would just write it all out. Billy was just crazy. He was like a mad scientist. And he was like, so he would tell you, all right, we got to take it a half hour before we work out. And when you said that, I remember distinctly one time being in the car with him. He's like, it's a half hour before the gym. Pull over. I'm like, well, wait, let's wait till let's go to the apartment or something. Your apartment is around the corner from the gym. No, we got to stop right now and do it. And we actually... We're shooting each other. It's terrorized <laughs> on the side of the road. Hell I'm yeah, like, bro. You said that. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I don't know if you just was saying that, like just telling the story, but I'm like, that actually happened. No, nah, that happened, yeah, man. We did it over off of the interstate over by between Slidell and uh the exit by the movie theater, bro. We would duck off over there and fucking pipe them down, boy. Yep, Billy. That used to, when you said that, I was like, man, be your nose. I was like, that used to be Billy. Dude. I mean, like, Billy was so, he, he was so goofy, bro. He would, yeah, he was so like, uh, I forgot about how much we used to go to the gym, man. That was the big thing. We would go to the gym, do the protein shakes. Like, he was on it. Yep, he was when he was working out. I mean, Billy wasn't a big dude, but that boy could bench press 350 pounds when he was working out. Bro, and he I would remember. fucking fight it, dude. And he was, he was a, he was tough too, dude. He was the toughest. Well, let me tell you. So, well, I cut you off. I'm bad. Go no, ahead. go on. So my wife and I, we walking down Bourbon Street one day, you know, years ago, and I look down the side street and I see these three dudes on this one dude and they giving it to him. But this dude is giving it back. I mean, he's fighting. I'm like, man, that dude's like, I didn't want to get involved. You know, I'm, you know, we go up boxing and stuff. I said, guy, it looks like he's been stressing. He needs some help. But I don't know what's going on. Why these three dudes is fighting this one dude? And man, my wife's just looking and I look. And I'm like, holy shit, that's my brother. And like this dude were trying to get away. They was like beating him up. <clears throat> he was fighting back. He was knock one down. They would start to run. They would get that front up and they trying to run away. But he wouldn't let him leave. He just he didn't want to he, he wanted to get him. You know what I mean? So they're wow. trying to run off. And he's going after him steadily. So I'm running behind him. I'm like, Billy, Billy turns around and he sees me. And he always he'd be like, hey, what's up? And see Ronnie, come on, let's go get drunk. He was just trying to rob him. He just was like this gay dude is fighting with these three dudes. And he's giving them everything. Like I was respecting it because I'm like, man, that dude's giving to him. He's, he's not, you know, they getting him. But that was Billy. It was always like that. Way. It was always something. Dude, he was, was like a yeah. Like he was dude. like a million people trapped in one person. You're right. That's a good analogy of him. You're right. He was he had dude, so many friends and a lot of people did like him. He was a likable dude. Oh, bro, he was the most likable, bro. When he came to Mandeville, I mean, everybody liked him, man. I mean, everybody. He was like the mayor, man. It was like, you know, he was just, I don't know, man. He was just so fucking ridiculous. And, uh, but he would give you the shirt off his back, man. And a million times he'd like, he would do things for people that you would just never expect it, man. And I felt like he was like loyal, uh, at just an insane level, you know? That That's Billy. That's Billy. Yep. Billy definitely was that. And the dogs, now that's the shit that scared me about y'all's whole fucking family, bro. Y'all got attack animals. Const- y'all had so many fucking attack animals, dude. Man, I'd pull up to Billy's house and he would have a pit bull on the roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, like literally on the roof. I'm like, Billy, what is the dog doing on the roof? He's like, he just gets up there. And yeah. <laughs> he trained his dog to run somehow and he would grab the gutters and pull himself up on top of the roof. Yeah. And, uh, Billy always had... I remember he got in a fist fight with his dog one time. He said he pushed him off the couch and the dog growled at him. Yeah. He was like, you're growling at me. And he pushed him back and he was like, all bit up. I'm like, what happened? He goes, me and Kyle got into a fight. Hilarious. I'm like, wait, what? He goes, yeah, we were fighting. I was punching him. I was like, okay. I said, what now? He was like, yeah, we good now. I put him in the room for about a day. He came out. He goes, he goes, who's boss? I was Billy. Dude was a trip. Dude, he was a trip, He was a trip, man. He Billy was, shows up one time. I'm I'm at my mom's house. I, I don't remember. We were there. It might have been her birthday or Mother's Day, and we there late. Mm-hmm. You know, Billy's hey, Chuck, over there. We gonna, let me. Ahead. I'm gonna try you. Do you have Facetime audio? Can I call you on Facetime audio? Do you ever have that? Yep. Let me yep. call you on that right now. Okay. All right. Yo. Yeah, I can hear you way better now. Way better. You know what? I probably should have turned off my Wi-Fi. I wasn't thinking about that. Sometimes no, everything's great, man. Shady. I appreciate it. Look, dude, I just appreciate even just having this conversation, man. Even just being able to think about your brother, man. I, you know, I was at a time in my life when I met him that, you know, I just needed, I think I needed like a friend. My brother had kind of gotten into drugs at the time and, um, or my brother just wasn't in my, my brother wasn't in my life at the time. And so Billy was just, 
he was just cool you know he was just kind of everything he was yeah loyal he was caring he was like uh he was almost like a whole family stuck in one fucking little italian dude that was losing his hair you know yeah <laughs> yeah i miss that dude i really do miss him yeah I, like you know when when uh my son you know i text you a little bit about it but when my son actually stumbled across your podcast and uh I you know walked past him. He's literally he's in his room. He's like I'm like I know that dude. So he used to be your uncle's friend, and I told him a little bit about you, and and, uh, and that's when I, uh, uh, I tweeted you and the shirts and all this stuff. My son wears his. It seems like every other day he's got it on. You know he doesn't remember my brother as much. You know he died. My son would have been I guess he'd have been six or seven years old at the time. How long Billy's been? It's been fifteen years now. I guess so. Yeah, he's been dead. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, he hasn't got to see my son box or any of that stuff. Oh, your son boxes? All of that. Oh, well, he doesn't anymore. He did for a while. He's got right. a bunch of amateur fights. We tried to qualify for the Olympics, the last ones that they had way back when. He got to like a semifinal and then uh, lost to a guy. But my son reminds me a lot of my brother. They built exactly the same. Hilarious. Like, they both, yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, wow, you remind me of my brother so much. Yeah, Twig. man, Billy was, dude, that was the thing. It was like, he could teach you to fight. He could teach you to fucking cook. Bro, we got so high one night, and uh, and first of all, he had those pit bulls. Dude, I couldn't get high and be around a pit bull, bro. I was so scared of dogs. <laughs> and Billy would be like, Dio, bro, what's wrong with you, bro? And I'm like, dude, I'm fucking high as fuck. And this dog, bro, this fucking dog could kill both of us, man. Billy, he had those dogs. I, just, I didn't know how he did it. When he passed, you know, we were all like, what are we going to do with his dogs? And I remember we, we all was afraid of him. <laughs> and so, you know, I was, I was like, there's no, Billy used to say, he goes, when I die, put my dogs in a coffin with him. <laughs> but, you know, so when he when he did pass, everybody's like, what are we going to do with his dogs? I'm like, there's no way I'm bringing my dogs, uh, my brother's dogs to the SPCA. I'm like, we're going to have to take them. My wife, too, she was, like, kind of sketchy about it. And I'm like, we're taking the dogs. Best decision I've ever made in my life with really? those dogs. That dog was so smart. And, and that was kind of, like, in my heyday when I was, you know, after Billy was handling a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm a family man. Mm -hmm. I'm got this whole other job. I'm, I'm doing books and professional job. I'm going to work every day. And then I had this whole other, you know, you're poor. You grew up as poor as we grew up. Mm -hmm. You don't pass up anything, that an opportunity to make a dollar. You know what I mean? Right. You know, so it's, you know, when I had the opportunity to, to sell some marijuana and I was like, man, my brother's kind of already doing a lot of that stuff already. Anyway, I was like, I have some money saved. I was like, come on, let's make some more money. So that's how we kind of got all started into it. But when you grow up as poor as we did, it's hard to pass up all of that stuff. And so when Billy, yeah, cause it's business, it's a bit, it's a, it's a right. business that's easily accessible and it's right there. You could get into business, bro. You got to have just a little bit of money up front. Right. Right, hardly no capital to get started. It's, yeah. it's you know, everybody's like easy money, fast money. There's nothing easy about it. You know, right. I always say if somebody's paying you a dollar an hour, it's probably because that's what the job. It's all. It's all it requires. It's it's all it. it it's it, there's no justification to pay you more than a dollar an hour, right? Right. You're selling some marijuana, and you're making you know a couple extra few thousand dollars extra a month. There's no such thing as these. A lot of stress that comes with it and get in trouble, and your know, things do happen. Right. So it was never easy money, but it was available with, with, with little capital. And like I said, as poor as we grew up, I wasn't passing up an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So when he dies and, you know, I'm home and I'm kind of living a double life, I don't want my wife to find out. And so I was putting up the money. Billy was doing all the running back and forth. And so when he passed, I was like, I, we was already kind of established. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I mean, I've already had the charge and, you know, I haven't been charged with any of this stuff yet, but I'm going to say it anyway. I guess if they want to come get me. <laughs> but Billy was running back and forth to Houston with about 300 pounds every single month. Wow. Like those kind of, right. Those Fuck kind of yeah. numbers, Billy. And then, like, his car broke down one time, and, like, I'm like, Billy, where are you at? I'm like, we, you know, I thought he maybe got popped or something because, you know, he leaves. You expect him to be back the next day at around 5 o'clock. We don't hear from Billy. Right. You don't hear from him. You don't hear from him. He calls me up at like 2 o'clock in the morning. A couple of days later, I'm like, Billy, what's up? He goes, man, my car broke down. I left in Houston. I took a train. This boy got on a train with 300 pounds of marijuana <laughs> yeah. and took a train to New Orleans. And he's at the bus stop with his fucking bags. I'm like, this dude is crazy, but I love him. That was Billy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, bro. He was crazy, right. but you loved him, man. This dude was on a train for like a whole entire day. It took forever. I was like, man, we could have just, just Billy. Like, that's how he was. He shows up. I was telling you, 
we at my mom's house and he's over there and we're in our early 20s and uh he's like man i goes i got my car skills down i can get in the car take off be out of him about 30 seconds down the street he goes come on i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you i'm like well how you gonna get in you pick the lock he goes, i break the window but the way i break it it's silent it don't make any noise i'm like He's like, come on, I'm going to show you. So we walk, like, we cut through this yard. We're in our 20s. We, men, you know what I mean? We're mm-hmm. not kids. We know better, but it's Billy. So you're just like, well, let's see what this adventure's going to be. Yeah. We walk out, and he picks up these six rocks. He's looking for, like, these six pebbles. They got to be the right size. And he gets them in his hand, and he's shaking them up like you would shake some dice at the crap table. And he walks up to this car, and he's like, you know, being stealthy and quiet and i'm kind of ducked back on the other side of the street because i'm like i don't know if they have cameras but i'm gonna run you know what i mean so <laughs> he walks up and he takes these rocks because the trick is and he's looking back at me he's like narrating he's like, you got a side on the window's gonna blow out i'm gonna get underneath that dash we're gonna be gone i'm like okay billy throws these rocks it hits that window Boom! <laughs> loudest noise you ever want to hear lights come on we run and, and all we can do is laugh the whole way i'm like this boy is a fool fucking billy bro and, B- and billy would be laughing too dude billy was so would good laugh, right? bro thought this shit was funny dude he would even if shit was the most serious bro he would also be able to laugh at the same exact moment man yep you're right Dude, it was crazy, man. He, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, dude. So we got all high one night and we went over to his place. He was living off of Florida Street in Mandeville. And, you know, he cooked up some chicken cutlets or something. He was always cooking, you know. And, uh, and then he fucking, Princess Diana had died, bro. And I didn't know who Princess Diana was. I thought it was like a dog or something. And, uh, and Billy's like all sad and shit and crying, bro. And I'm fucking high as fuck, dude. And uh, I just remember thinking, like, dude, how did I even get what? The, what is even going on over here, bro? Mm-hmm. Dude, we used to throw parties, Billy. We'd, uh, I think Billy came to our fucking prom at school, bro, just to fucking go out and party with us, bro. Right? That sounds right. I almost kind of remember something like that. It just sounds familiar when you just said that. I, I kind of remember that. Him saying about going to prom or something with somebody at school, and I just remembered like it didn't even seem odd. I was like, yeah, well, shit, that's Billy. That's what he's gonna do. Yeah. Yeah, man, he was you know, one of a kind, man. Yeah, and then just thinking, like I'm saying the stuff about him, that boy had no felonies. He had a bunch of misdemeanors. He was arrested a bunch of times, but when you're an addict and you're addicted, you know, those are the kind of things that come along with that territory, you know? Oh, yeah, 100%, man. And so he got pretty – I didn't see him, like, in some of the later – in some of his, like, last few years. Um, and so he got pretty addicted at that point? No. Billy was always a functional addict. I've never – like, I've seen my family members that – the drugs just, they incapacitate them. They can't do anything. They just, they, they crack heads or they dope fiends. That's all they do. Billy was never that way. Whenever I would see Billy, even though he was in a million different pieces, he always seemed to go. He always had, he always was going somewhere, doing something. I had something working for him. This boy, you know, he, he in, the, in the middle of being heavily addicted to drugs, he's going to college. Like right. that's Billy. And, you know, he, he didn't actually die from, you know, the, the, how he died he's billy did run into a bunch of embankments i could just remember picking him up before him calling him like i'm stuck on side the road because you know he told me yeah. that his car broke down he left it he probably told me you know what i'm saying knowing billy yeah he but gave me a soma one time and i fucking hit an embankment bro like no joke dude in mandeville uh yeah. he, he gave me a soma i'd never taken one dude and i fucking the first turn i took was straight up into a little embankment yeah and then so he uh he wasn't really bad and we actually we on a friday we were it was after katrina and we was in east over in new orleans east and we just finished the job it was actually the Birdman's house the, wow. the rapper we we just finished his house billy did all the inside stuff i did fencing and some other stuff i think i packed some stuff on the, on the roof of that house in east over and um talked to him it was Shucks, it was Friday. He paid me. He gave me 30000 So I, I don't know. And we was just on a job for a couple of months. So I don't know what his pay was, but it was wow. way more than mine because I was working for him at the time. You know, doing, he, he was doing the construction stuff, and I, I, I owned a gas station. That's what I was doing, running the gas station and doing different books for different businesses and stuff. And so when Katrina comes, we start doing the construction. We do this job, and uh, it was he was like, man, some friends of his was playing uh, Texas Hold'em. So I went. I was like, and told my wife, hey, go and play Texas Hold'em with Billy. We get out there, we play, and I'm 
in Metairie. I'm on my way home, and he was going to our cousin's house mm-hmm. in Franklinton. Mm-hmm. And um, he calls me up on a causeway. It's about 1 o'clock in the morning at this point. He's like, man, I'm falling asleep. I'm falling asleep. Talk to me. I'm like, Billy, we just got paid. You got that truck. I'm like, there's no sense to fall asleep at the wheel and run off the causeway because that was typical Billy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, I talked to him. He got to the Shell Station on the North Shore side of the causeway. Mm-hmm. They got that Shell Station. Oh, yeah, right there. He said, yep. He says, I'm going to pull in the parking lot right here and sleep. So I'm like, all right, cool. So about 12 o'clock that Saturday afternoon, he calls me up. He's like, I'm just waking up. I was sleeping in the parking lot this whole time. I'm going by Phillips' house. So I was like, all right, I'll see you Monday. Monday morning, no Billy. He was dead. He was gone. Oh. Yep. So he was always a functional addict. He was never, it was nef- never where it had him so bad <clears throat> that, you know, that it was, uh, that he wasn't able to still be a part of society and, you know, have friends and do things. Yeah. Well, man, he taught me, a, you know, he was, uh, man, he was a friend of so many, bro. I can't, I mean, dude, it's so funny. Every time I talk to somebody who knew Billy or was around that time, man, have a beautiful story about him or something fucking absolutely ridiculous. Dude, I remember he had, he had a, uh, he had a party, a crawfish boil one time at his house. And this, I think when he was living with, uh, Jimmy and Deshaun maybe or something. And, um, dude. And they had a family showed up, and the whole family was wearing the same Adidas track suits, bro. The whole family, bro. <laughs> and I'd never seen anything like that. The children, too. The, both the parents and the children. I, don't know. I wonder who it was. I don't know, bro. <laughs> but it was fucking amazing, dude. That's hilarious. It was so good, right? Man. Right. Billy, Billy uh, he calls me up. Come pick him up from New Orleans locker, uh, Gretna lockup, and... Um, Go pick him up, and he's like, "Bring it up." He got arrested for uh, stealing shoes out of Academy mm-hmm. uh, in, in Gretna. So, pick him up. He's like, "Bring him back to Academy." I'm like, "Why?" He goes, "Just bring me back." You know, that's how he was. Like, he would be, he would tell you, like, "Bring me back," but it wasn't like threatening. It was just Billy. You know what I mean? So he's like, "Bring me back over there." So I'm like, "All right, you don't ask any questions when he tells you that." So, bring him back to Academy. He's like, "Go around the back." I'm like, "What is this dude about to do?" And again, I know better, and he right. knows better. But I'm like, it's Billy, and this is going to be an adventure. It's going to be an adventure. Right. What is he about to do? So he goes, and there was like uh, the trailer from, you know, them semis pulled the trailers, right? It was just like an empty trailer Mm -hmm. that was uh, parked behind the academy. So he's like, pull up to the back. So he he gets out my car. He runs. He goes underneath the trailer, and he starts pulling out boxes of shoes. Gets back and close. All right, come on. Let's go. He goes, ha, ha. They didn't get these. (laughs) He was going to the academy stealing shoes and sticking them. Underneath the trailer, you know, and then like going back because he couldn't carry as many. So when they caught him, they only got him with one pair of shoes. Wow. So needless to say, the shoes that he stole, it was right around Christmas time. All my nephews and some of the other kids, they all got brand new tennis shoes for Christmas. That's why. He was That's hilarious. <laughs> right. Right. That was when Charity Hospital was open right near, uh, you know, New Orleans near Tulane. And um, he calls me up again. He's like, come pick me up. I'm over here. I go pick him up. And he gets in my car, literally, with the IV tower. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, what's going on? He goes, nah, bring me to my apartment. I'm like, Billy. I'm like, you got, nah, it's okay. They already know, man, I'm real cool with the nurses and everything. They don't care. I'm like, but wait a minute. I don't even know. I think he might have been there for his asthma or something. He had bad asthma. I can't remember. What, it might have been one of the times he might have OD'd. Mm-hmm. Not really sure. But he let him, he's supposed to go out to just smoke a cigarette. Right? This dude gets in my car with the whole IV tower, with the bag hanging and everything. <laughs> Bring him across the bridge. We we uh we go to his apartment. <laughs> they have like security and a nursing staff. They all outside looking for this dude. He gets out the car and he's just like, it was I don't know. It's just Billy pull up the IV. <laughs> yeah, <it's so laughs> rare, right. They're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, I'm sure they had to yeah. change their policy after that. They didn't let nobody go out and smoke cigarettes anymore. <laughs> he told. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I just remember he got one time he went to jail. He and I were to, to driving in New Orleans or something, and I threw a oh we had a joint, and I threw um I was pissed or something, and I threw that bitch out the window or something, and uh and the cops stopped us, man, and uh and I passed. They let me stay. I was, and they took him to jail, and they let me just stay and sleep in the car. And I remember I got yeah. in the back, and then 
Yeah, he was always just into something, man. But he was always fun. He loved to be like an instigator of life. Like, oh, you're right. Let's get something. Let's make something exciting. Let's get something going, bro. He, dude, he took me to my first boxing match. That's back when Jimmy was bo- boxing. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does he still? Yeah. He doesn't box anymore. No, he's older now. Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy passed. All of them boys are dead. Billy, Jimmy, Ronnie, and Chuck. He doesn't know the Chuck. Wow. Jimmy, Jimmy has a brother, Chuck. All of them boys are dead. All four of them, all younger than me. Well, Billy was a year older than me. But Ronnie, Chuck, and we all were like brothers. We grew up together. We were together all the time. And then when Jimmy started boxing pretty heavily, I don't let off. Then, you know, one of us would get either Billy would get his matchmaker license or promoter license. Yeah. Whenever you put on a boxing match, you got to have, have a fighter, of course. And then somebody's got to have a promoter's license and you got to have a matchmaker's license. But one person can't. I don't know how it is these days, but at the time, one person could hold all those licenses. So, uh, Jimmy, we would run a spot. Jim, one person would get a promoter's license. It'd be either me or Billy. One person would get a matchmaker license, and Jimmy would like put on his own shows. And we would, you know, it was just another way to make a hustle. Wow. And so, yeah, I went Jimmy, to the fight. I went to I went to at least one of them over there in Fat City over there. Man, those boys, you know, <laughs> the stories from them. It's just, it's you know. You, my wife, every time my brother would call, she knew I would just get up. And I'm like, I have to go get him. You know, it was Billy and I are close in age. We're just a year apart. Wow. And it was just him and I. You know, it was most of the time, just growing up, it was him and I, him and I. Yeah. And so anytime he ever called, he needed me. I was there for him because his, even though he had that, the, the chemical dependency problem, you didn't really notice it. You just you only knew it because of the things he would, you know, he would get in trouble, you know, often. Yeah. He was always getting arrested or something was going on. But it wasn't because something was missing out of your house or Mm-mm. he did something to you. It Mm-mm. was never those things. And so he, my wife always liked having him around. My kids did. Oh, yeah. He definitely by far, my mom says she doesn't have favorites, but definitely by far was my mom's favorite. But how wow. could you not be? It was Billy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, man, he was remarkable, bro. He was, uh, man, he really, really was, dude. He was, I just, yeah, man. I mean, just the fact that so many people, dude, I was at a, in Biloxi. They had two dudes had uh, uh, Billy Conforto and Bankman Gang shirts on. That's awesome. And, dude, everywhere I go, somebody yelled out the other night at the show, R.I.P. Billy Conforto. Um, wow, that's awesome. And, bro, awesome. that's happened, I'm not joking, in 15 different cities. Um so, yeah, and it's funny. I didn't know that was going to happen whenever I started talking about, you know, stories from just growing up. Uh, you know, I never had any intention of that, but it just goes to show how many people, you know, somehow just think that he, you know, just think it's he's just still entertaining people, you know? Yeah. Let me just a quick look. I tell you, Billy, you know, is, is born with asthma. My mom said he was so sick that there was times... His chicken came by him. He's making all kinds of noise. What, you got a uh, chicken? I bought, I just went to Walmart and I bought this little chicken coop because I have a friend that has eggs. Mm-hmm. And so I bought this little chicken coop and I buy five chickens to put in there. Well, I do construction too on the side. Of it's, course. Right. I, I got the store and I'm still doing construction. And, um, yeah, bro. You're just like Billy, bro. Right. <laughs> you just like fucking Billy, dude. Brothers. You got My fucking brothers. chickens. You got a store. <laughs> And you're right. doing so, construction, man. I love it, bro. Right. So uh, we go through this job. It's a foreclosure that we have to like get all the stuff out of. And there was eleven chickens. And they're like, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna have to euthanize them." So I took the chickens. And so now I have okay. nineteen chickens running around. Damn, this place. Crazy, <laughs> I got a pool area. I got this big pool. My backyard is nice. I mean, it's a big pool area, and there's chicken shit everywhere. And my kids is like, "Ah, uh-huh. my <laughs> wife wants to shoot me." I promise. <laughs> And I told her, I promised, I said, okay, no more animals. I just had goats. My goats just died about a year ago. Oh, goats is beautiful, little, bro. Goats is man, beautiful. These two little, I had these two little miniature goats, and it was fucking awesome. I, I love these little goats, but they died, and so now we got the chickens. Damn. Dude, yeah. well, one thing that's funny is one time when we had a party, my brother and Billy used to live together. And... um. And so they had a party one time, and we wanted people to get there. It was kind of confusing to give directions. So we put up all these signs that said goats for sale, and you just had to follow the signs because <laughs> we didn't want the cops to know it was a party. So all these signs across town said goats for sale, and then you got to the, awesome. to the party. <laughs> Dude, it was yeah. so funny, bro. Yeah, and my brother, like, uh, yeah, Billy was just all, I don't know, man. It, life was exciting when he was around, man. It definitely was fun, and so that's what I'm saying. So growing up, you know, he was born sick, and um, you know, with the asthma and my mom. That's why I, I say it 
was her favorite. It was just she just felt like she always had to make sure he was okay because he was a sickly kid. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, growing up, I think he might have been two or three years old. He climbed a tree, this oak tree. We don't even know how he got up there. I just remember my, my dad and I was like, go get the ladder so we can get him down. So this three, four-year-old kid climbs this tree. They want to allow him to get him down. He fell out and landed on his face. That's why his nose looked like that. They really? His nose fixed, right. That's why his nose was crooked like that. He fell out of a tree at three years old and just, I'm assuming that's why. But he did definitely, that's what my mom says. He broke his nose. I was young. I don't remember. I just remember the stories they say. You know what I mean? Yeah. But his boy fell out of a tree and broke his nose. And I just remember, you know, he always was short. I mean, I'm 6'3". Mm -hmm. He always was short and small as a kid. And I just remember we would always get into these fights. You know, growing up poor, we, we lived on the West Bank in New Orleans and bad areas. And somebody was always stealing our bikes. Or start, you couldn't walk to the store without somebody punching you in the face. And this isn't kids that's your size fight. Yeah, I remember we had this Doberman that we found somewhere and we had this dog for a long time. We moved actually from one house and went to this new house where we were staying mm -hmm. and we just walked to a grocery store with our dog. One of us was standing outside with the dog where the other person went in, but they had these guys, it was in their twenties and we had to be 11 or 12 <laughs> years old. They trying to take our dog from saying it was their dog. So like Billy, takes one in the face from this yeah, grown ass right. man you know what i'm saying he ain't letting yeah, right. dog. i come out his face is bleeding and i'm like what happened he goes that guy's trying to take our dog so my mom we go home and we tell my mom my mom is every bit as crazy as my <laughs> maybe crazy kids. i gotta be careful she's here she's living with her. she moved in about four months ago but, uh, hilarious so my mom my mom's like she's like where so we take, it's me and my mom and Billy, we go into this neighborhood, and my mom fights these two grown men. Hilarious. She's like, y'all think this is y'all dog? Yeah, she was crazy. So, early as an age, I just remember we always getting into something, and Billy being so small, and my dad and my uncles were all boxers, and so we learned how to box. <laughs> you know, it was like, we didn't know it was good, We didn't, you know, especially Billy, you didn't know it was good for you. You'd get out there and somebody would stand up to you. We were more afraid of our mom. Yeah. Um, you know, she, it's a typical thing growing up in New Orleans. Somebody hits you, you better hit them back. Yeah. Uh, you better not come home and say you didn't do it because you're going to get it from me. It wasn't like, hey, mom, these guys are so big they could kill us. She didn't want to hear that. She's like, go fight them. Yeah. <laughs> so that was Billy. So so Billy, the whole time when we were kids, Billy by far of all seven of us was the brightest, the smartest. Like We all thought we were going to work for him. And I remember... You know, when you're kids, you have that little, you know, your kids, you, you fight sibling rivalry, rivalry, you're fighting with each other, you argue, all seven of us kids poor and stuck in this little bitty ass house. You're going to argue and fight. And I can remember Billy all the time. His argument was, he'd, go, he'd be like, at a very young age, he'd be like, go ahead, keep going. Keep going. Because when y'all working for me, I'm going to make sure I get We all thought we was like, yeah, Billy's too smart. We're all going to work for him. <laughs> He's going to be, you know, that's how that's how we viewed that dude. That dude was like that. And then after the drugs for a while, and he started to stutter a little bit, but I think it was because he OD'd a couple times. Man, and it made him different. I made a mistake. I wish I'd have never told him that, but I told him one day I was like, I'm going to tell him, like, Billy, you're different. He goes, oh. What do you mean? He goes, What do you mean? I'm like, You're not as sharp as you used to be. And and so I tried to explain it to him because I thought I was helping him by saying, Hey. You're doing all these fucking drugs and they're fucking with your brain. Yeah. But I think all I did was hurt his feelings because anytime I'd see him after that, he'd be like, ah, look, I look high now. And I'd be like, nah, Billy, oh. I, see him, I see him sharp now. Like, yeah, he's sharp. But he was different. Yeah, he was. Man, it's like, crazy, man. Addiction, that stuff's crazy, man. I struggle addiction. with it. It struggle, you know, it, it affects a lot of my family. and Yeah. Man, it and makes me sad. He, yeah, and I don't know. Billy, you know, almost, he, he said to me one time that him being a homosexual, he said he felt like in order for him to stop doing the drugs, he'd have to stop being a homosexual. Wow. He said, it because he, he explained to me like this one day, he goes, just think of like a rock star. You know, you play in ACDC or Motley Crue or whatever band you're in. He goes, when you're in a band, it just, that's, it's the party scene, your party, they got, you got roadies, you got in drugs. It was just all part of the scene. He goes, yeah. I feel like that about being a homosexual. It's part of the scene. I go out, I party, hang out with these dudes. We cut up. And so he, he told me one time, I asked him, I said, you think it was Brian Gary or is something that changed? He said, I don't know. He goes, I kind of can remember as a young kid that I thought I saw, like, I can remember seeing, like, a penis. I don't know whose it was or why it was there, hmm. but I can remember that. And he was like, so he, go, he, he thinks that, he said he just thinks somebody desensitized him to it and just 
when he was a young age, somebody did something to him and he don't know. He just knows that it felt good. Wow. And not that he looked at it as a bad thing. Right. Just, you know, it's my brother. I can ask him anything. Yeah, yeah. So I just asked him, why are you gay? He said, you know, he says, I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm not ashamed of it. He said, but if I could flip a switch and not be gay, I would. Wow. And he said, only because of the simple fact, because of society. He was not that you really should care about what society thanks for how they are but you know it probably just be a little bit easier yeah and he just said that one time and i don't know if he was high when he said it but i remember no, that when makes billy sense came, when billy came out to me he told me so the same little brother that billy got the bikes and had to walk in the store anymore mm-hmm. we in our early 20s and i'm talking we call our little brother called him sweet Pea, and i'm like sweet i was like guess who's gay and he was like i'm like somebody in the family that's really close to us is gay <laughs> So this dude is guessing everybody. He's saying Jimmy, <laughs> Ronnie, Chuck, everybody we know. And so it was like me and Billy was left. So he's looking. He goes, well, only you and Billy's left. He looks at me. He goes, nigga, you gay? And I'm like, no, Billy's gay. It ain't him. It's Billy. Like, that's how ungay this dude was for being a gay dude. I know, just, bro. It was, it was just Billy. It was weird. <laughs> Damn, <dude. Right? laughs> You gay? I'm like, no, you fucker. I ain't made you Damn, he was the last one to be guessed. Dude, yeah, I think when I think back, Billy was the first gay dude I ever met, man, I think. I mean, I'm trying to think. Bro, dude, I remember he took me to some of the gay clubs in New Orleans a couple times. I'd never been before. He's like, bro, you gonna fucking... And dude, he the the thing he loved to see was my the reaction that I when, when I would see dudes in there and he would start dying laughing, bro. He loves shocking people. He loves shocking he people, shocked dude. And embarrassing, yeah. Yes, he loved that shit, dude. And he always thought everybody was trying to fuck him or trying to fuck somebody, bro. <laughs> he would be like, "Dude, bro, do you see the way the manager looked at you, man? I think she's trying to fuck you, bro." Theo, so. Bro, and I'll like, be like, what, dude? What you, she just told me to go do the silverware. He'd be like, nah, bro, you got to watch. He's like, dude. Or he'd come in the back and be like, bro, I think the chef is trying to fuck me, bro. And I'm like, what? That's what it was. <laughs> Everybody. It was so funny. It was so even funny, like, bro. Even like you, Theo. Was, he was like, man. I was like, when I was talking to you know my brothers and my son, he said, yeah, I started talking to Theo. He's going to give me a call. And um, they're like, well, you know. Most of everybody remembers you just because of your your, your popularity, and and so everybody in my family knows who you are, and it's just because you know Billy's friend. But um, I just was like, yeah, I remember Theo, and I was like, Billy would always have like not always, but I remember it was you, this other guy. Oh, so I can't Bo, his, his name was Bo. He had or Sean uh, he, Barr. He had him. He had this dude Clint. But he's yeah, they in love with me. But I was like, they would never. I never would think it. Like looking at him mm-hmm. and talking to Billy. And just being around, I was like, I've never seen, like when I was talking about you to my son, I was like, I've never seen one interaction where I would say, oh, maybe they are together, maybe they're not together. Like, Billy would always have these dudes around, and we knew that he was gay, mm-hmm. but I always used to wonder if everybody else knew, because it didn't seem that way. Well, dude, that's what, it's so funny, a friend of mine this weekend, we're like, they're like, I think that guy was a pedophile, and I said, no, I said, I don't, I mean, I think he just kind of never grew up a little bit. But he never tried anything on me. He never, like, I don't feel like he ever mistreated me or, like, was rude. I think he honestly was just probably, like, one of the, just one of the nicer friends that I had. And he was also the tougher, he's one of the toughest friends. So it was like, you could talk to him about whatever. And then also, if shit got out of hand, he could he could handle shit. Yep. Um, right. I feel like that about my son, too. Like, I feel... I said he reminds me a lot of my brother. It's the same thing. Like he's not this big intimidating figure, but you don't worry about him at all. Like right. I, just, I don't. My son goes to these festivals by himself. He's driving across the United States. Going. To, he's twenty four years old. Wow. And we just we don't worry about him. He's like, ah, hey, it's Chaz. He's just gonna land on his feet like a cat. That's how we used to feel about Billy. Yeah. Like I, I don't ever remember worrying about him at all. It's like, I just didn't worry. And even with the ODing and stuff, it wasn't like the drug problem was so bad that he was on the verge of death. This is how, uh, of the times I know he's OD'd, he's OD'd about four times. But wow. all four times that I know if he OD'd was always the same story. So he would stop for a while, mm-hmm. then he would go hang out, and then the next day he'd be OD'd. Damn. And, so, and that's what happened the last time. So I think what it was was like, you know, I always say, like, imagine if you smoke cigarettes, right? You smoke a pack and a half or two packs of cigarettes a day. Mm-hmm. And then you went down, cut it all the way down to where you smoke, like, a cigarette every other day or a cigarette a day. 
Yeah. To you, you would be off. You'd be like, yeah, I'm off. I kicked it. I only smoke a cigarette a day. Yeah. That's how Billy would be. He'd be off all the drugs. And it's mostly just pills. Yeah, he was always, he always had pills. That was it. It was pills. Right. I know he did mess with heroin a little bit at times, but that wasn't really what was messing him up. What was messing him up was just all the different pills, the methadone, the, yeah. those wafers that, that he was going to some clinic and was getting to help him get off of other stuff. So Billy would get off the stuff. We would work out. And he'd go meet one of his buddies, I guess, one of his gay buddies, and they would just go party. Oh, and go party, yeah. He'd, right, and then he'd, he'd get so high, I think, and that's how I think what happened when he died. He, he, did, you know, he just was hanging out. It wasn't even like they was at a drug house. They just was hanging out. And they said Billy just, they went and looked, they couldn't find, he, he had a bunch of methadone, a bunch of psalms and all kind of different pills. And I know why Billy bought them. I told you, we just got paid. He was going to flip it. You know, yeah. he was going to sell them. He's like, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to sell them. Well, oh, yeah. He always had cash, dude. He, Billy had cash always. And he'd give you, bro, if you were struggling, he, you, and he'd give you cash, bro. You gave him a ride somewhere, he'd give you cash. You know what? Thinking, never, thinking back on it, I think he, I think probably some of the reasons maybe were self-serving why he, you know, maybe befriended younger guys. I mean, I think sometimes he needed a ride. Like, he wanted a, a friend to go work out with, right? But... He also would pay for the gym membership, so he'd be like, "Hey, man, I got us a membership to Franco's. You drive us, and I'll do, I'll take care of the membership." So, you know, I think he just, you know, he always. I, I don't know, man. I, I try to think sometimes. Like, I mean, we were just friends because we met. We were working at the same place. We both like to work out, uh, and then yeah, we started doing steroids. So we would fucking, you know, I couldn't tell anybody about that except for him. So, and then sometimes I would drive him across the lake to get weed, and it would be like the most weed I ever seen in my life, bro. Like enough yep. weed where if you were playing hide and go seek with somebody, you could hide behind it, bro. That's how much weed it was. Right. It, I told you it'd be like three hundred pounds <laughs> on the bus one time. So yeah, it was a lot of weed. This wasn't no, uh, this wasn't no good stuff. This was regular swag. Yeah. Some yeah. Swag. yeah. So that shit oh, used dude. to be big. <laughs> oh, bro, one of them one had a branch, like a real branch from a river was in some of it one time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I said, damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I believe it. But he, uh, he always was, a, he always was, um, you know, he always treated me with respect and he always, uh, he stood up for me. And he also boosted my fe feelings a lot of times when I wasn't feeling good about myself. He would uh, say, he would tell me things about myself that were real positive. Uh, things that I couldn't even dude. see. He he was he, he, he would see things dude. in me that I couldn't even see in myself. Yeah. And um and I needed that influence in my life at that time, bro. Yeah, uh, you couldn't, he was very intuitive and perceptive. You know, he always was he always knew what somebody else would seem like for the right thing to say. That's what I would say about how my mom was so attached to him too, because he would do the same thing with her. He just would make her feel great when he would be around. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he would, man. He always compliment you. He was just so he was such a loving dude, bro. Uh, you know, and I never felt like he was love. He was loving at me in like a gay way. I just always felt like he was just my friend, and that. Uh, and I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just. It's interesting that you and I are sitting here talking about him years later, and we did. We actually sold a bunch of shirts. We want to do something nice for your mom. We want to. I don't know if I want to sit down with her sometime, or just next time I'm at home, we want to just take the the money that was raised and just. You know, I know Billy loved his mother. He always talked about his family, bro. And so we yeah. just we want to do something nice. Uh, you don't have to let her know, but we we'll just plan it as it gets a little closer when I'm gonna be a, around home. And you know, and you don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want to do, of course. And yeah, no, know, we want to though. I think he would want to. He would want to. She just moved in with us. She wasn't doing too well because you know she's got the same problems too. She's addicted to the to just prescription pills and <clears throat> gets them from the doctor. They prescribe her. I don't even know what she gets. Forty or fifty pills a month from the dude. And then yeah. she runs out by the fifteenth of the month. It's supposed to last her all month. Right and then by the fifteenth of the month, she's out. And then she was starting to drink because she was she didn't have the pills. So she oh. was drinking alcohol. And she's already a manic depressant. That's just more. You know, alcohol is a depressant. So it's just that on top of it. You got People, it in the you know, family. It runs in y'all's family, man. Yeah. Like that little store that I own, she lived uh, about two miles away from it. So they call me up one day. They're like, uh, Chuck, your mom's in a store. She's got, my mom's very private too. Like she doesn't, like if she went to a restaurant and your finger was in her, like if you're the server and your finger was in her plate, mm -hmm. she's not going to eat the food. She's like, she's real private and weird. And she's not a germaphobe, but she just likes her, 
she don't like for nobody to know her business and mm-hmm. to impose on people. So for them to call me and say she's in a store a certain type of way, mm. even with her with the pills and everything, was very odd for me. But she's at my store, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, Chuck, your mom's in here. She has one shoe on. She's half dressed and she's trying to buy beer. What wow. do we do? They're like, somebody's like, call the police. And I'm like, no, take her keys from her and see if somebody will bring her home. Like, you just get a customer. Somebody, you know, I've been having a store. Been, I grew up where my store is at, back in Ames. Mm-hmm. Grew up there. It's where we lived the whole life. Everybody where in Laplace? <clears throat> no, in Marrero. Mm-hmm. In Marrero. So, uh, so they're trying to get to bring her home. They call me up and they're like, well, we're waiting for somebody to come get her. But my mom was literally, and she, they took her keys and she agreed at first, but then she wanted to leave. Yeah. So she wanted her keys back. They wouldn't give her her keys back. She's parked in front of my store. She's sitting on the horn, just blowing a horn <laughs> for like five minutes straight. And they're like the, the the girl I had working. She's like customers were coming in. And they're like, what is going on out there? They're like, oh, that's the owner's mom. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. Bro, Billy would have died fucking watching oh, that he shit, man. His ass off. That's yep. hilarious, dude. That's so funny. Well, we you know, can talk about it then. Maybe maybe you can just, you know, maybe you just keep the money on the side in case there's a time to do something nice for her and you can just decide whenever that'll be. But it ain't a ton of money or nothing. And I know you're not thinking about it, but I just, I'm, it's the last, I feel like it's something nice that everybody that bought the shirt, I feel like, you know, they just care about Billy, man. And so they, I mean, it's weird, bro. People fucking, you know, people like him. Yeah, I mean Billy would want you. My mom's good. You know, she's here. She gets a. Uh, she gets my stepdad's social security check. <clears throat> I live in a thirty-two hundred square foot house. Oh, okay. Half the land with chickens everywhere, and she's <laughs> fine. You know, Billy would rather if if you really want to do something with the money, donate it to an SPCA and make some more shirts with him and sell your shirts. And he would. Billy would not care at all. He'd be like, "Fucking right." Yeah. Got a hustle. Let's put it on. Let's make modes too. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Well, maybe we'll think of something. Let me. Maybe we'll think but of something, and the proceeds could go towards dogs or something. You know, that's a great idea, man. Um, but I'll keep you posted, and kind of maybe I can consult with you a little bit about it, and we we can sure. make a choice together. Or something that uh, you know, that he would that he would approve of. Yeah. But I appreciate your time, man. And um, yeah, man. I just I don't know. Your brother just infected a people with a lot of fucking ridiculous. I mean, he was just, even though he wasn't alive for that long, it seemed like he was just alive so much, you know? Yeah. He died. He was 33 years old when he died. Wow. Yeah, young. Yeah, it's so young, man. Those pills, yep. that's crazy, man. It's just so yeah, crazy. It was the pills, right. It was the pills. It wasn't even heroin. He didn't die with a needle in his arm. He just went to our, to our cousin's house and took some pills and was loaded. Probably went to the bathroom, came back and took some more pills. And Yeah. You know? Did you forget you took them? That's the problem. That's what, right. That's what happened. That's what happened. That's what we think happened. Because he loved life. He definitely was. Oh, yeah. you know, a lot of people that have those kind of problems, they, they, it's hard for them to function, just to function in life. Because the drug is such a big, I mean, it knocks you down, right? Right. That's all, that's, it's, it defines you when you do drugs. But it didn't define Billy. That's the difference. Yeah. You know? If there's other people out there like that, I don't know them. But the drugs definitely didn't define him. It was just something that he did. Yeah. And homosexuality was the same way. He wasn't ashamed by it. Yeah. He loved his sexuality, but it didn't define him. It wasn't like, hey, that's that gay dude. No, in fact, bro, he seemed like the straightest fucking dude I ever knew, bro. Theo, we played flag football. Billy was an awesome athlete. I don't know if you knew that about (laughs) him. We played football. And we, you know, in our 20s. I have kids and I can't let the dream go. I'm like getting a flag football team together. You playing? He's like, yep. We out there. Billy takes the flags and he puts them in the front mm-hmm. as a joke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. The referees are like, no, you have to turn them around. He's like, oh, like that's how he does. Somebody, yeah, do bro. Like, bro, and he would put his. Sometimes he would put his hand kind of by his mouth and kind of he would make like this funny kind of face. I'm trying to remember what it was a little bit. Theo, that's the exact face he made when he put the flag in front. I can he see that, bro. Laugh in that face, so that's the, that's what he did. And then, like somebody would do a good play, he'd smack him on that. Like, good <laughs> job, and smack him real hard. He'd look at us and laugh. And I'd be like, Billy. I remember one day he comes over, like how you know, just how he was. Like he comes over one day, and um, he saw him. He got a manicure and a pedicure, and I'm like, what? I'm like, you got a manicure and a pedicure. I'm like, what kind of bag are you? He goes, no, no, it's the only gay thing I do. I go, I go, wait, uh, you don't suck dick. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> like that was Billy. My wife was like, "Oh my god, are you just uh, uh, I'm like, "That's the only gay thing I remember." He come off. I'm like doing my landscape, and one day he goes, "Man, Rhonda's flowers are looking good." I'm like, "Rhonda's flowers? I'm like, Those are my flowers. I planted all that." It took a lot of time. He's like, "I thought I was the gay one." You know? <laughs> like that's how he was. Dude, it's so funny because I don't even, I mean, I think of him as being gay as like a side thing, but I, I guess I never. It didn't define him. It didn't define him right. at all, bro. No. Nope. And he didn't nope. like it. These dudes that it does define, he would always be like, fuck, man, these guys are some, you know, some real queens. He was really just, man, he was just one of a fucking kind, bro. He yeah. was one of a kind, man. And uh, definitely was. Dude, I'm just grateful that I know him, man. I'm grateful that I had that I got to know him, and I, you know, I, and I hope that I'll see him again someday. And and dude, we got to catch up whenever I'm around. Yeah, dude. We we'll have to Should catch up in person. Crawfish or barbecue or something. Come past through for a minute or something. I'd love tell to do mom, it. I'm telling her hello. Tell her you love my brother. I will. I'd love to be able to do that, man. That'd be awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll be in touch, man. And you got my number too. And if there's something that I can sure. do, and I'll and I'll keep you posted. We'll figure it out. But I think something maybe with dogs. Yeah, we'll think of something cool. Whatever, however, it's all good, man. I just appreciate. I was told my brother yesterday. I, it sounds like you're trying to wrap it up, and I just end it right here. But uh, I told my brother yesterday. I said I'm actually mad about this shirt. I said because I didn't think of it first. Just, you know, remember my brother. I love the image. It's like it that. It definitely does capture him. The, the image on that shirt it captures Billy. Well, it's funny. You I know? told a guy. They said, "Well, what does he look like?" I said, "He looks a little bit kind of like Don Flamenco from the." Mike Tyson, Tyson punch, punch out. out. We used that. We used to tease him. We used to tell him that. We used to call him that. Oh. Don Flamingo with the rope. <laughs> yeah, with the rope. Right character, love Billy. You in a boxing game? <laughs> so yeah, we used to give him a hard time about that. <laughs> yeah. Yo, then Billy being Billy, he would do the little dance. Yeah, like he would do the fucking <laughs> dance, bro. <right. laughs> burp, burp, burp. Yeah, dude. Yep. And I, yep. maybe that's how I even remember that. Maybe he told me that, bro. I don't know. Maybe so. But um. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm just, I'm grateful that I knew him, man. I'm grateful that he existed, and, and I'm glad that you have so many, I mean, you have so many memories of him, man. That's pretty cool, bro. And you, you seem to really understand kind of who he was. He was just, man, he loved to instigate. He loved to just see people's reactions. He loved to just, he loved to have, just be a part of what was going on. Yeah. Yeah, yep. man. He's definitely an inspiration to me, bro, and I'm glad. Even just hearing you talk about him reminds me of so many things that I just forgot about. Right, I'm remembering stuff as we talk. I'm like, ah, I'm just remembering so many different things. This dude, yep, definitely. I haven't showed my mom the shirt yet. I don't know how she was gonna handle it. Just you know, she gets upset about it. But I'm, I'm just waiting. I wanna, I wanna show her. Like, I wanna show your podcast and you're talking about. It. I know it's just gonna touch and she's gonna cry. So I'm just waiting for a day where her spirits are good and I think she's ready to handle it. Yeah, you know, she's 70 now and. In, yeah. It just gets a little tough, but she definitely misses him. She still got his ashes. She keeps him. She talks to him. And oh. so to her, it's like it just happened still, you know, just because it just, I don't know what it'd be like to lose a kid. It's got to be rough. Yeah, I can't imagine, man. I really can't imagine. And you know what's funny now? I think about it. There's so many, like, I started just telling stories from growing up, and then people would always write on social media about Billy. And so it was like, <clears throat> I didn't say, hey, write about Billy, you know, talk about people would just bring him up all the time. And so it kind of created like this life of its own a little. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wish we had some other pictures and stuff of him. But uh, but yeah, maybe when I come by, dude, you could show me a couple of uh, if you guys got any old photos, that'd be great to see. You have to check it out. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. Anytime you do a show somewhere, I want to come check you out. So yeah, if you're in Mississippi, Louisiana, anywhere close, you know, driving distance. Let me know. Yeah, I will, man. Check just don't out. bring any of those fucking dogs, bro. That shit scares me. <laughs> I just had, you know, I had so I had, I had Billy's dogs until they both died, and then um, a relative of ours has the uh, brother of Billy's dogs, one of his dogs, and so I got two dogs from that litter. Yeah, and the last one just died about three months ago. <laughs> he made it all the way to this house with us. Wow. But yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that Billy Conforto strain or Billy Mintz. What name did he go by? I mean, we I knew him as Billy well, Conforto, but dude, we would be walking into a building, bro, and he would be like, "Hey, if anybody asks in here if I'm Billy Mintz, tell him my name is Chad, bro." That's what he would say. Chad Busby. <laughs> yeah, that's what he would say, bro. 
So I never I knew who he, every building we went yeah. into, he was a different, he had a different variation of his name. Conforto is my grandmother's maiden name. She came from Sicily. Okay. And it's her, it's her maiden name. And my, her, her father, my great grandfather had Papa Joe's on Bourbon Street. It's Papa Joe Conforto. He had the original, uh, Papa Joe's. I think there is still a Papa Joe's or Joe something on Bourbon. Mm -hmm. But Billy with all his troubles, uh, is why he went by Conforto. So it was my grandmother's name. And Billy actually had an ID with his picture on it. said Billy Conforto. I don't know how he did yeah. it. He, had. <laughs> right, yeah. so he actually was both. You know, he was Billy Conforto <laughs> and Billy Metz. <laughs> that was I'm Billy. telling you, bro, he's a million people in one person, man. He really was. <laughs> There's a book. Uh, this guy, Frenchy Brulette, I think his name was. He's uh, just uh, He just recently was murdered in New Orleans. But... Uh, he wrote a book, and I think it's called um, – it's a pretty interesting book. He talks about the Confortos, my, my grandmother and her brothers, mm -hmm. and some of the things that they did in this book. And it's pretty – it's 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 just more stories of, like, our family. I'm like, yeah, look, you know, we tell these stories, and I wonder if people are like, man, how true and which, <laughs> or how – you know, what details was just changed a little bit that, you know <laughs> – that wasn't, but I'm like, no, nah, this is all actually stuff that happened. <laughs> and so you read this book, and here's a guy that I don't even know this guy. I've never met him, don't know who he is. I just pick up this book, and I'm reading it's, it's, it's called Mr. New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading this book, and I see the name Conforto, and I read this book, and it's talking about my my uncles. Wow. You know, and, and so, yeah, so, yeah, if you ever check it out, you, can, it's, you can probably look, scroll through it pretty quick and just see what he says about it and how tough they were. That's crazy. Brothers and stuff. Yeah, so these, the stories, they almost, some of them take legs of their own and they go different ways, but a lot of them, the details is pretty much accurate. That's wild, bro. I'm telling you, dude, you guys got a special strand or whatever DNA y'all got, man. It's, uh, there's something about it. You know, just with my name, anywhere I go, everybody's like, wait a minute, you're a who? Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm, you think I'm all of my uncle and my cousins. I did do a little bit of boxing. And I, <laughs> I, I, I did train my son and all of that good stuff. And I do have a, uh, you know, I've been in a little bit of trouble, but them boys, man, I just was almost like just in the audience, just watching and being entertained, even though I was a part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just, it was great. Yeah. Well, man, I'm just glad that, I even, uh, that I've had the ability just to know y'all's family, man. And I really appreciate the time, dude. And uh, tell your son I said what's up, and we'll get around there whenever sure. I'm back in town. Yeah, dude, hit me up. I will, man. I appreciate it, bro. And, uh, All right. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, man. R.I.P. Billy Conforto, bro. All right, Hey, man, look, congratulations on the success, man. Everybody, I, you know, I got a cousin. He does a boxing podcast. Mm -hmm. I told him about you. And he was like, what, Theo? That's my dude. I, man, tell man. I want to get on the phone with y'all when y'all talk. That's what he, everybody. So, yeah, man. We got love out here still, too. So, just letting you know. Respect, man. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for uh, for telling me about that. And give uh, tell him I said what's up as well. I will. All right, Theo. All right, man. I'll talk to you soon, man. Thank you. All right, bro. All Later. right, peace, man.